Hello, welcome to Thrive Groups. We're glad to have you here with us this week. And before we get started, we want to go over kind of our ground rules here. We do this every week, but I want to make sure that everyone participates, no one dominates. So we want to make sure each person has an opportunity to share your thoughts, your observations, your insights, and your stories, and that nobody just dominates the conversation. Secondly, we start on time, we end on time. So we want to make sure that after the group is over, that, hey, we hang out for a few minutes, but then we stay respectful of the location that we're in and leave on time. That being said, we're gonna jump right in with our first question. What is something tough that you have done? Something tough you've, you've done. I mentioned it this past week, and uh, I'm actually gonna probably talk a little bit more about this in the upcoming weeks as well, but uh, I took some people to hike Mount Washington. It's a, it's a tough hike. Man, it's well worth it. You gotta be in good shape, but it's definitely tough. Love getting to hike up uh, the mountain. So. I uh, did that not too long ago, and it was a blast. But how about you? What's something tough that you did? Maybe it's an adventure like that. Maybe it's some tough decision you had to make. What's something tough that you've had to do in your life? Okay, we're going to read the verses from the Gospel of Luke that we covered in the sermon this week. We're not going to read the entire account of Zechariah, but we're going to kind of skip around a little bit. So here we go, and we're going to talk about whatever stands out to us. Okay, here we go. Luke 1. Starting in verse 5. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both were very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn the incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. Now the rest of the story there talks about how the angel tells Zechariah that he's going to have a son who will prepare the way for the Messiah and his son will be named John. Pick back up in verse 18. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man and my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now since you didn't believe what I said, you'll be silent and unable to speak until the child was born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. So the child was born. Here in verse 59, we're going to pick back up. When the baby was eight days old, they all came for the circumcision ceremony. They wanted to name him Zechariah after his father. But Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. What? They exclaimed. There's no one in all your family by that name. So they used gestures to ask the baby's father what he wanted to name him. And he motioned for a writing tablet. And to everyone's surprise, he wrote, his name is John. And instantly, Zechariah could speak again, and he began praising God. So, take a few moments to talk about anything that maybe stood out to you as you read that. Okay, so next question here is to share about a time you faced a fear. I'll talk about one specifically. When I was younger, I went to a summer camp. It was an adventure camp. We did all kinds of crazy things, rope courses, rock climbing, and all of these things. And and in the midst of one of the ropes courses where you go through these obstacles and whatever, I ended up getting injured and, uh, and, and it just kind of really shook me. And then after that, we still had to go on and do these obstacles. And I was kind of afraid to go and move forward. And the next obstacle that we had was where you're on this tower, probably about 40 foot high, and there's a trapeze bar. I don't know how far it was. It seemed like it was 10 feet away. And the goal was you had to run on the tower, jump as far as you could and try to catch a hold of this trapeze bar. Keep in mind, we were we were tied in, so it was, was safe and all. But I had already just gotten injured, and now here I was up there, and I was afraid to get injured again. Faced the fear, ran out, jumped, and I think I grabbed it, as well as my memory can serve me. Um, but, uh, but it was a time that I faced a fear. But how about you? Have you ever faced a fear? I'm sure you have, but what's a story about a time when you faced a fear in your own life? Next question is this. Have you ever doubted God? You know, recently... Uh, our church has been looking for a new location for our new Britain campus. I've been talking about this in these videos some and how it's been very frustrating. And and, uh, and not that I really doubted God because I know that God's in control. 
but I wasn't sure that he was going to give us another location. And especially, I didn't know if he was going to give us a location in New Britain. I thought it might be in a surrounding town or something like that if he gave us one at all. So it was really just kind of like, I wasn't doubting God, but I was doubting the circumstance, I would say. And, uh, and just not too long ago, God brought a great facility for us for a great price and really opened up the doors. The place is going to do a build out for us. So we don't even have to worry about the construction. And it's been amazing seeing God move. But I was kind of, I was kind of doubting that it was all going to happen on the timeline that we needed it to happen. But how about you? Share about a time when you doubted God. Next question is this, what is something that you can praise God about? Well, I'm just going to piggyback on my last uh, answer, and that was the situation with New Britain, and we are praising God that we have a location now. So for all of you who've been praying for us, thank you. We are so grateful for that, but we are rejoicing. We're praising God for the good things that he has done here in this situation. We're looking forward to what he has in store for our New Britain campus. That being said, what about you? What is something that you can praise God about? Well, hey, thanks for joining us today. Before we close, we're going to close in a word of prayer. So we would invite each of you to take a few moments. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just say a few words, talking to God, thanking him for something, asking for, for guidance or intervention, whatever, and the leader will close it up. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that you have a great week.